Hey guys, welcome to Let's Talk Algorithms. This is Venkatesh, and today we'll be solving the problem task scheduler. So the problem statement is that given a list of tasks in the in the form of capital letters or basically um, uppercase letters, uppercase characters, and a cool-off period n. The cool-off period states that when you are solving each task, after solving each task, basically, either you wait the amount of cool cool-off period or solve other tasks. So given these are the conditions, what is the basically written the least number of intervals the CPU will take to finish all the given tasks at any point of time. So for a unit of time, you will you can solve one task or you, or you can just wait. So given these are the conditions, these are the tasks and a given n, which is cool of period, uh, we have to find the least number of unit time units, basically, um, which you can use to solve the given task. So um, the important consideration here is that um, after solving each task, you have to weight uh, the value n. In this case, the value is 2. So uh, let's think of a really brute force approach, right? What is the worst way you can solve this problem? The worst way you can solve this problem is, um, you know, solve a certain task, wait two units of time, and solve the task again, right? So yeah, this works, right? This is this is like real brute force. Uh, here you can just wait one task because you solve one, yay, and one, and all right. <clears throat> so this is uh, the most possible way to probably solve this problem. Um, how? Because after solving a task, you're like waiting until the cooldown period and going um, to the next task. So as you can see, um, this is a really safe way to do it. But the other way is basically, let's say you solve a task A, right? Then um, you can solve task B because it's a different task. Since you solved A, um, you solved B. So it's one unit of time, but the cool of period is two. So either you have to wait or solve some other task. Since we have only task A and B here, um, we don't have anything else to you know, solve. So you can just wait. Let's call W as a wait. Um, you can just add number one because you don't want to be confused with the task W in case we have one. So we solve A, B, and then you wait. And then you can do a similar thing, right? So, and then you can finally do this. So what is the time uh, taken to solve uh, these tasks and the cool of period two, which is basically, you see it's one, two, three, five, six, eight. So we took eight units of time to basically solve uh, three A's and three B tasks. So the way we did is um, we don't understand um, a pattern here because the number of tasks between A and B are same. Let's say uh, the input is something like this. A, B, B, B again. And let's say the cool of period is N is 2. So what would you do? Right, like let's say you went with like similar approach uh, as we did above. You saw A, you saw B. Um, so you don't have any yes left, and you just solved B. So you have to wait one. You have to wait one more time because the cool of period is two, and then you solve another B. You wait once. You wait one more time, and then you solve B. So the number of time, basically time units you require to solve this is also eight units. Think if we can optimize this, right? How do we optimize this? We can optimize this by, as we know, um, after solving a task, we have to wait n number of units, right? So ideally, uh, we should be greedy in the in the case, in the sense that after solving a certain task, we should make sure that there are um, make sure that there are enough um, you know other tasks to solve, um, so that so that we'll minimize the waiting time. How do we do this? Let's say instead of you know when the tasks are A B B, instead of tasks starting with A, let's we start let's start with B. 
So after solving B, after starting, uh, basically after doing the task B, you do task A. And then um, you wait, and then you can do B again. You wait, wait, and then B. As you can see, um, just by doing this, um, following this approach, basically solving the bigger problem first, we've reduced the time by one unit. So the input is disparate here, as in you have like three units of B and only one unit of A. So that's why you don't see, and, and that cool off period is a lot, which is, uh, I mean, basically two, uh, relative to the size of the input, it's a lot. So that's the reason the number of time units here is seven. But let's say you have a really large input uh, of varying kinds, and then you have a time of period, a certain time of period. Solving the bigger task first always gives you the best case uh, complexity. So that is what uh, the intuition here is, that you solve the bigger task, the number of the task with, um, with, with the largest repetition first, and then you solve other tasks and then come back to the largest task again. So let's write the algorithm for this. Let's comment this out. So the way we track all the repetition count and everything is uh, let's do int counter, int and a counter of, since the question main, mentioned that, we only have capital letters in the, num in the form of task. So we can just um, have an integer array of 26 size. And then for each character, or basically for each task, what do we do is we maintain the repetition here. Counter of C minus the character A. Basically, it gives you the relative index uh, of a certain task in the counter uh, array. So once we have that, let's sort it, right? We are sorting it because we want to solve the largest task first. And we do have, after solving, this is ascending order, right? Where do we have the largest task now? So the index 25 will have the largest task. So let's declare a variable time which stores the number of time units we actually require to solve all this thing. So we need an exit condition. So while counter of 25, which basically, um, which has the largest number of tasks, yeah, as I was discussing, um, the largest value would be at the index 25. So the exit condition is until the largest value is solved, right? The, until the largest task is solved, we repeat this thing. So in each loop, what do we do? Let's uh, in, initialize two variables, i and j, which is basically the, represents the um, number of tasks we solve in each loop. So, while we do that, the i, while well, i is less than or equal to n, and counter of j greater than zero. What do we do? So this is basically, um, we'll try to solve n number of tasks each time, right? The n is basically the cool of period. So while this is true, counter of g minus minus, reduce the number of tasks at index j, increase the time because we solve one task, to i plus plus, which is basically um, making sure that we only solve n number of tasks. And then the value j, j could be if basically j, if j is equal to zero, then we want to uh, move it back to the last index. If it's not, then we want to decrement once. So once this is done, so when do we exit this? We exit in this inner loop in two cases. One, after solving the number of tasks, which is like n, or um, we've solved all tasks basically. And then counter of j is zero. So array is dot sort. So 
So one after we do this, we'll resort the the counter array. And one thing to make sure um, is basically after solving this, make sure it's be, if it's been solved the whole problem. If it's been solved, break. Otherwise, we are going to assign time equal to time plus n minus i plus 1. So we do this. Um, let's say if we have a scenario where we solve number of um, basically the task less than uh, the value n. So let's say like in, in this scenario, right? We have solved the only one beat a task we have. So we have to either wait um, we basically have to wait until we solve the next task. So this is the value we use. If leftover task is less than n, then we do that. So finally, after this, we return that value time. So let's run the code. All right, what are we doing here? It's basically a task. All right, so for a given input, the value is eight, and we got it. Let's submit it. All right, it's run in seven milliseconds. So the time complexity here is uh, of n log n, uh, where n, n is the number of total tasks. If you have any questions, please feel feel free to um, comment on the video. And if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, thank you.